10 center fire rifle cartridges. 338 La Pua, Lo Pua, Winnie the Pooh Magnum. That last one's probably not right. Someone will surely correct me in the comments below as to how poor my pronunciation skills are. But anyways, welcome back to the range everybody. It's body armor test today. We've tested a lot of body armor over the years in various calibers all the way up to and including 50 BMG. We've tested some 338 projectiles out of our Remington Ultra Mag, but now that we have a 338 Lapua, I kind of want to see where we stand and what typical construction types we need to stop this bullet. So we have a level 3 plus plate from Shot Stop. This is an all polyethylene plate. We will strap this to our clay briefcase at approximately 40. Five feet, which is the NIJ testing distance. They figure if it stops at 45 feet and the back face signature is acceptable, any real world engagement of a caliber like this, you know, five, six, seven, eight plus, plus, plus yards, it's going to stop that round. It's about 90 degrees outside. It's cloudy right now. We have a Ruger Precision rifle back here with a 26 inch barrel, a very nice muzzle brake. We have the Brownells Match Precision Optic on there. It's the five to 25 power. We don't need all of that power. Five power will be close enough. We'll use our Pro Chrono Digital as always. We have our monitor finally mounted down here at our range. So you guys get that good feedback for velocity because that's the number one thing to always look out for in any armor testing is to make sure they include some kind of velocity. Otherwise, you're just taking a gamble I've received some positive feedback in some of the newer armor testing that I've done, including a spreadsheet, so that'll probably pop in right here. And what I do is I'm going to list the different threats that we're going to shoot against this plate, uh, whether or not they are an NIJ listed threat or not. In this case, 338 is not. We're actually going to test some subsonic 338 against this first and then step up to the full power. With all that being said, I will reposition the cameras, stop talking, and we'll start shooting. For anyone that is new to my channel, this is what I like to call my clay briefcase. This is a 16 and a half by 16 and a half solid steel construction backer that I use for all of my armor testing when applicable. Sometimes if we use clear ballistics gel, we'll use that. We have a wood backer there, so if we need to try to find a projectile we can this has a non-hardening modeling clay in it it's similar to the roma plastima plastina number one that the nij uses but it's a little different it, i think it has a lower melting point so when i've heated it up in the past to try to calibrate it the nij drops a solid steel ball i think two inches in diameter at six feet in a bunch of different spots and you record the back face Mine's come close, but it's not quite there. And because I shoot outside in my backyard, essentially, this just acts as a compressible media behind the body armor so that you get a good representation of what it's going to do if someone were to be wearing it and get shot. It's pretty, not too soft right now, but once we put the body armor on there and we shoot it, you're gonna see a back face signature on there. This thing is heavy. I forget how many pounds of clay are in there plus whatever the angle iron weighs when we constructed it. So this is probably one of the preferred ways to test body armor instead of just throwing it on the ground or screwing it between some 2 by 4s We'll start with the slowest of the rounds that we're going to test today. I have a 250 grain spear grand slam. This should be going subsonic or very close to it. We'll shoot this at the bottom left of the plate. Then I have a 240 grain Lehigh Defense flash tip that we'll shoot at the right side of the plate. Then we'll go down and see what we did. At this velocity, putting two on the plate and then going and checking them out should be fine because I don't foresee a lot of back face happening. Hopefully I have it dialed in so we get onto the plate. Velocity 1150, little on the supersonic side today. 
it is warm outside. Need a 338 suppressor. I'll have to work on that in a later video. This hydro sled from Caldwell is pretty nice. Velocity, 1184. So about 35 feet per second, or 50 feet per second, supersonic, but still gets the point across. Here was our 250 grain shot. We were a little close to the edge, but with a polyethylene plate, you pretty much have full edge to edge coverage. You just when you get to the edge, if you're too close, then the edge will deform and the bullet can slip down the bottom. Here was the 240 grain flash tip. I don't have an assistant today, so I apologize if the camera does wonky things. We are using the gimbal. What do you guys think? Ho! Pass through. Rut row raggy. So that flash tip right there is the exit hole is able to penetrate at subsonic velocities, which with a 338 Lapua is going to be many, many hundreds of yards downrange. Our spear grand slam there, that didn't stand a chance. Back face isn't terrible on the Grand Slam, but like I said, this clay is a little on the hard side today, so it's gonna give you a little bit of under-representation, but it's just there to kind of give you an idea. Now, the NIJ calls for up to 44 millimeters of back face signature before they say that kind of impact can cause internal damages, which can lead to death. So don't always assume that just because you see a dimple in the plate that it's going to knock you down and in, into the next county. We'll have to see if we can find that flash tip in there. I don't think it penetrated out of the backside there, so it's probably still in there somewhere. Interesting. I wonder what the full power loads are going to do. All right, now we're gonna try full power. 338 Lapua. This is an IMI 250 grain OTM. I thought it was a soft point, but it's an OTM. We'll try this first and then go to the 300 grain. Should be right in the middle of the plate for this test. Shot, I should say. Hopefully. Velocity, 2861. Let's look at the backside first. You guys can take some bets. Do you think it went through? I don't see any disturbed wood. Come around to the front here. I apologize if the gimbal does not follow me correctly. Here was our shot right here. We are a little close to these other 9mm shots, but these things pretty much didn't really degrade the plate in any way that it would hurt it against this 338. Again, I apologize, I am doing this by myself. Ho, 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 ho. That giant put your fist in hole. Look at the back of that plate but it stopped it. Now, like I said, this is where back face takes over. Give me a second to grab my calipers and we'll try to measure it. But that plate stopped it. We have our depth gauge here. We'll try to see if we can get a measurement on this guy. So you're looking at approximately 50.14 millimeters of back face. Probably substantially more with the actual NIJ clay. 
So you probably would fail on this plate because of the back face. It didn't penetrate, but because of that extreme amount of back face, it's gonna fail. I have a feeling the 300 grain is gonna do the same thing. We'll beat the clay back into shape and then see what we can do. Time for Mr. Heavy. This is a 300 grain Sierra Match King. We're gonna go for the top middle of the plate. We have our clay beaten back into shape with Thor's hammer. Just my Blood here. Velocity 2402, and hopefully, I just didn't take out my depth gauge that was sitting behind the clay briefcase that I just knocked over. Here was our impact right there. I wanted it to be up here a little more. But that's a good area of the plate. We do have a prior shot right here, but this was a plate used for the nine millimeter testing. So it should be pretty solid for stopping threats. Place your bets now while I fumble with the straps. Ho! Oh, that is another one of those large cavities. A lot more back face this time with the 300 grain. Actually, it looks like the polyethylene down here from where it was pushed out is now pushed up here, but it stopped it. We'll get our depth gauge out here. Try to give you a number. Because it looks like it pushed, it pushed it all around the NIJ has a better way of measuring this. They typically do it before. That one's about 53.35 millimeters. So definitely don't get hit with 338 Lapua at 45 feet. I'd say that was a pretty successful outing with our first test of the 338 Lapua against our armor. It looks like we should definitely test 338 against ceramic. Maybe that ceramic strike face will break that projectile up a lot sooner so that we're gonna see a lot less back face deformation. I do have a Militech level four plate at home that hasn't been used. Drop a comment below if we should retest these particular rounds against a ceramic strike face before moving on to the tungsten core AP versions of 338 Lapua. As always, I'd like to thank the armor manufacturer, in this case, ShotStop, for providing us with plates to test. Armor and the ammunition used in some of my videos is never a cheap endeavor, but I feel that if I can provide you guys with more information for better purchasing, then that's a win in my book. I'd also like to thank my Patreon supporters and you all for watching. Until next time, catch you at the range. To bolt to our clay briefcase at approximately 45 feet, which is the NIJ testing district.